You know what's better than winning fair and square? Cheating your way to the top. I'm just kidding. Cheating's bad. Don't do it. Unless you're messing around in a single player game, in which case, have a blast. Use some cheats. Today on Game Ranks, here are the 10 best modern games with cheats. Starting off with number 10, Spiral Reignited Trilogy is an interesting one for this list because it's a game that was released in 2018, but it was a remake of games that were released from 1998 to 2000. So as you would expect, the cheats are more or less identical to the ones from the time. You can do some really basic stuff like change Spyro's color, which isn't really game changing, but it's still a fun old school inclusion in the cheat options. But you also get the more fun stuff like just giving yourself 99 lives so you can try all dumb strategies you want and just explore and be super reckless. But there's also a ton of other cosmetic options like big head mode, making Spyro into a 2D model, bringing back the rough old school Spyro character model, or most importantly, giving him a pair of sunglasses like a cool guy. And the way you activate all these cheats is just as old school. Rather than collecting something in the world and then locking them from a menu or putting in a secret word or phrase into a cheat section, here you have to actually punch in specific button combinations to get the desired cheat. Now the actual button combos aren't exactly the same as they were back in 1998, but they still get the job done and feel authentic enough and it's really cool to see. Sonic Mania is another homage to the old school games that came before it, and as such, it has some really cool cheat options, despite being so new. So for the cheats in Sonic Mania, first you need to go through and enable the debug mode, going into the Mania mode, highlighting the no save option, and punching in a simple button combination that varies by platform. Once you have that enabled, you can unlock the other cheats that the game has to offer. After that, you can easily unlock the level select mode, which also unlocks a sound test menu. That sound test menu is where you can select different sounds in sequence, which is then in turn used to activate the different cheats. These cheats range from simple stuff like adding continues, unlocking all the chaos emeralds so you can be supersonic, enabling supersonic flight in normal levels, and letting Sonic use all the powers at once for max control. They're cool to play with and check out, but do be warned that as is the case with a lot of these modern cheats, once you enable the debug menu, you disable the ability to earn trophies and achievements, so yeah, the more you know. Moving on to number 8, next up we're talking about Skyrim and Fallout 4. Technically, there aren't any official cheats for these two, but we wanted to show, you know, some love to our PC gamers and mention console commands, which, you know, are essentially cheats just on PC. I mean, console commands manipulate the game the same way a cheat code does, so... I don't know. You can activate God Mode, change your carry weight to whatever you want, and you can even use them to spawn NPCs and specific items. Mix this with mods and you can get some really hilarious effects. There's even a kill command where you can target someone in the world, type kill, and boom, they're dead. Yeah, yeah, we know they aren't technically cheats, but like we said, we just wanted to show our PC player some love. That and console commands are just as fun as cheats. At number 7, we have Rage 2. This one is a wacky game, maybe a little too wacky at times, and even the way it handles cheats is kind of wacky and interesting. In order to use cheats in Rage 2, you have to find a vendor out in the wasteland called the Wasteland Wizard, and then they'll sell you cheats. There's only a few cheats, and they all do something different. There are ones that don't affect the gameplay too much, like the He's on Fire cheat, which, when activated, has Tim Kittrow commentate every move you make. You, you know, the commentator from games like NFL Blitz. Then you have codes like Get Good, which actually affects the difficulty of the game in a way, making each enemy die in one hit. Then you have other ones that let you boost the power of your overdrive, and one that gives you unlimited redirects with the wing stick. Then there are some really fun ones like Red Barrel Rain that lets you spawn in a bunch of red barrels right in front of you. And then the Phoenix Rejector Seat, which when active, hitting the eject sends your car flying off into the sky instead of you. Rage 2 is already a pretty hectic game as it is, so adding some of these cheats into the mix really drives up that hecticness. Next to number 6, so Saints Row 4 is already a game where just playing it already basically feels like cheating. I mean, for, for real, you're basically a superhero and can Superman jump, almost fly, hit dudes with ice beams, stuff like that. It's just kind of the purest power fantasy in a weird way. But Saints Row is a type of series that always needs to be pushing things further than they probably should. So yeah, on top of all that wild stuff, they're still including a ton of cheat codes for you to punch in and just really go buck wild with. So you have a bunch of vehicle cheats where you can spawn in different vehicles, remove the entire concept of vehicle damage, or repair your vehicle on command, which is cool, but like if you're using cars in this game, you're kind of playing it wrong. The real cool stuff comes in once you start messing with the character and world cheats. Now, sure, they're not all 
all winners and still have the usual open world stuff like money and killing your wanted level, but it also has stuff like ramping up the intensity of all of your abilities. To more fun stuff like making it so dead bodies rise up into the air like they're being raptured, or turning every pedestrian into a guy in a mascot costume. Yeah, like everything else in the series, Saints Row 4 goes big and just doesn't really care, and it's pretty great. At number 5 we have Dusk. If you're not familiar, Dusk is an indie FPS that takes a ton of inspiration from FPS classics like Quake and Doom and all that good stuff. And some of that inspiration shows up in the cheats. So not only does Dusk have cheats, like those old games it's paying respects to, some of them are straight up just references to those games as well as other games in general. In the original Doom you can input the code IDKFA which gives you full health, full everything, all weapons, all keys for that level. In Dusk, you can punch in NDKFA, and it does the same thing, really. You type in NB Gata and you get double movement speed, which is a reference to Sonic the Hedgehog because he's gotta go fast. Now there's also all of that other stuff you come to expect, like giving yourself other power-ups, god mode, higher jump height, stuff like that. But those ones are some of the more interesting ones, so we wanted to call them out here. Oh, and all of those cheats can be found in the game's directory, in a folder called goodies, listed neatly in a document literally just labeled cheats.txt. Yeah, they, they really go for it. At number 4 we have Doom Eternal. This is another game that's just non-stop insanity, even on a not insane difficulty. There's always something coming at you, and when you do get a minute to breathe, you feel like you've been holding your breath for like hours. And what's one thing that's going to make this game even more hectic? Cheat codes. Finding cheat codes in Doom Eternal I think is actually way more fun than using them. Doom has really cool collectibles and they're all really fun to hunt down. Hidden throughout each level, you'll find floppy disks hidden in weird spots, and each one is a cheat code. There are some real good ones too, like Party Mode, which makes demons burst into confetti, which reminds me of the similar one from Halo. Then there are less silly ones, like Infinite Extra Lives, Unlock and Fully Upgrade Every Weapon, uh, Infinity Ammo, you know, the usual ones. I really recommend not touching any of these until after completing the game, then go back and start messing around with those cheats. The game is way too good to change up with cheat codes, and man, I love Doom Eternal. Go play Doom Eternal. At number three, now call me weird, but when I think of cheat codes, I don't think of the more retro NES and SNES era stuff, but I think of Grand Theft Auto. GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas were the golden age of cheat codes for a lot of people, and when that style of 3D open world crime game was hot and new, and people just wanted to run around and cause complete chaos and mayhem, those codes let you do just that, and it was awesome. So that said, it's been really great to see the later games, specifically GTA 5, keep that spirit alive and offer the same dumb cheats they always have, plus some more to accommodate for the new gameplay mechanics added throughout the years. Now they may seem kind of basic compared to some of the wilder ones on this list, they still make the game fun as hell. Being able to instantly give yourself max health and armor when you're just tearing through Los Santos on a reign of terror, recharging your special ability, enabling stuff like the super jump, moon gravity, explosive melee attacks, explosive bullets, the list goes on and on. The possibilities for mayhem you can cause is pretty much endless. And a lot of them are accessed the same way they were in previous games, through a quick button combination that doesn't really break up the flow of the game. In these recent games, you can also just punch in a phone number instead, which, I mean, it can definitely be easier to remember than remembering a string of 12 button presses per code, so we're here for it. Coming down to number two, we have Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah, surprise, surprise, right? Another Rockstar game with cheats. Who would have thunk it? You know those kids in town that are yelling about newspapers? Yeah, you, you should always buy those whenever you go through a new town because that's how you unlock new cheats. There are some cheats that you can just enter and they unlock, but certain ones require you to have a certain issue of the newspaper in your inventory or by filling out what other prerequisites you have to get done to actually use it. There are some fun ones like the a fool on command cheat which makes you instantly drunk and being drunk in Red Dead 2 is a blast. Remember that drunk mission early on? Yeah, that's that's a that's a good one. Then there are more useful ones that will refill, you know, all of your stat bars or spawn a certain load out of weapons and ones that will even spawn a maxed out horse. Rockstar games have always had a ton of fun cheats, even going back to games like GTA 3 and State of Emergency and Red Dead 2 is no different. Finally, at number one, we have The Sims 4. 
cheat codes in The Sims go way back. I mean, some of the first cheats are still used in The Sims 4, like Rosebud. In The Sims 4, that gives you $1,000, and in the OG Sims, it also gave you money there as well. But anyway, yeah, some of these cheats pretty much break the game and kind of defeats the purpose of, you know, what it is, but we aren't judging. I mean, The Sims is all about simulating life and getting to keep your Sim alive. But what if you do that enough with your own life? You've managed to keep yourself alive, so why not have a cheat life and have some fun with cheat codes. Use motherload to make yourself rich, then use free real estate to make all the neighborhood lots free. You can also use cheat codes to max out skill levels and aspirations. You can lean even more into the god roll and use a cheat to spawn your sim new friends or use a cheat to manage your friendship level with a pre-existing sim. You can really manipulate the sims any way you want. Like I said, you've managed to keep yourself alive in real life, right? Take a break, use some cheats in the sims, you've earned it. And those are the 10 best modern games with cheats, but we want to hear from you, so meet us down in the comments and let us know what you think. I'm sure there's a few that we forgot. As I'm sure you already know, hitting that like button really helps us out, and if you're new here, subscribing is a good idea, because we put up videos like this every single day. As always, thank you for stopping by to hang out with us, we really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.